Today, we're going to be watching none other than ABC's hit drama from 2005, still running to this day. Today, we're going to be talking about all things Grey's Anatomy. You guys know I don't do TV shows that often, and I'm basically stabbing myself in my own foot right now because the reason I don't do TV shows is because it's so long-winded and because it is so many episodes and so many contexts, and I'm choosing to embark on the longest journey of that, choosing the longest show ever that I would ever be covering. But it's the only show that I've watched this many seasons of because there's no other show that I would watch this many seasons of, literally no other show. The show has much critical praise. It has been a beacon for TV it has been just this pillar that stays there no matter what shows come and go Grey's Anatomy is still there and it's received much critical praise but it also has received backlash over the years it's a very controversial show a lot of the times they do storylines based off of uh current topics or current controversies happening uh within our society that we live in and it is also home to many of your favorite actors guest starring in the show same as SVU same as Criminal Minds almost every single celebrity has been in Grey's Anatomy including faces like Millie Bobby Brown, you have Kiki Palmer, you have Sarah Paulson. There's also people like Jesse Plemons. Jesse Plemons was in the show. You have Skylar Austin, you have Demi Lovato, Christina Ritchie, Mandy Moore, Dylan Minnette, Seth Green, Matthew Morrison. Grey's Anatomy chose to follow in the footsteps of many medical dramas that have come up before by basically having every single doctor have sex with each other. And that is a disservice while talking about Grey's Anatomy. I think Grey's Anatomy, for when you watch the beginning seasons, you're talking about a lot of different taboo subjects uh, regarding medical issues and also just reoccurring issues in our day-to-day -day lives that they showcase within medical cases and also what the characters go through. Grey's Anatomy was created by none other than Shauna Rhimes, creator of some of your favorite hit drama TV series to hit television like Scandal, How to Get Away with Murder, Private Practice. I think she also did Station 19 inventing Anna and she is also home to one of the most popular shows on Netflix right now Bridgerton and here I wrote down my quick Shauna praise because I just want to applaud Shauna Rhimes because I know she has a lot of like issues as well as like for someone who's been writing for that long I can't imagine that they come without criticism but I wanted to showcase how much of a pioneer she was not only are her TV shows just like immaculate she's really good at writing characters especially love stories and drama I think she's really creative and like you know she puts her characters through the ringer I think that like it must have been so hard for her coming up I mean it's 2005 she writes this pilot for Grey's Anatomy it's her first show that she creates and it becomes one of the most successful shows of all time still running to this day in 2024 like that is insane and she's still continuing to work and make such great shows that just take off like none other in the time of 2005 progressive shows you know didn't really exist and through Grey's Anatomy, Shonda Rhimes made it a space for inclusion to teach a generation about the struggles of different lives. And you guys are always asking me to watch different TV shows and give you my opinions on different TV shows. Some of the TV shows I've already watched, some of the TV shows I just don't want to sit on camera and watch the entire thing because it is just too much to do or I have other projects that I have committed to already. And before we get into the seasons and the pinnacle points of each season that I want to talk about, the dra dramatic points within those seasons, I want to talk about the characters because I feel like if you guys like understand my opinions on the characters, my opinions on the seasons and storylines will make a lot more sense. Now you guys are always asking me to watch different TV shows and give you my opinions on different TV shows. Some of the TV shows I've already watched, some of the TV shows I just don't want to sit on camera and watch the entire thing because it is just too much to do or I have other projects that I have committed to already. I want to introduce you guys to a new app called Fable where we can talk about TV shows together on a weekly basis. If you guys join my club, you can talk with me about different TV shows that we are watching in the club right now. So for example, when this video goes up, we're going to be watching Grey's Anatomy. So I'm going to be hopping into different episodes on the app and talking to you guys about the episode. And you guys can also talk to each other. It's a community based app. So you guys can meet people that love Grey's Anatomy just like I do and just like you do. It's a free app and you can download and join with me right now. This is a way that I can talk to you guys about TV shows and even books. There's also book clubs on there. So you might catch me reading a book. No matter what club you join, whether that's a book club or a TV show club, you can avoid spoilers on stuff that you haven't watched yet by joining the specific episode that you watch. So it's a little chat room that is dedicated to the specific episode that you watched or a specific chapter that you watched. This avoids any spoilers or anybody that skipped ahead that's read a little bit further 
further than you have or watched a little bit further than you have especially with a show like Grey's Anatomy where so much happens in one episode this way you can avoid seeing which character dies by going to the specific episode that you just watched that you want to talk about so download the app today because I will be in my club room today when this video goes out right now talking about Grey's Anatomy so while you're watching this video you can chat with me because I will be there chatting away about Grey's Anatomy thank you Fable for sponsoring today's video you can use my link or click the link at the top of the description right now to download Fable and join my club today Meredith Grey we're gonna be talking about Meredith Grey because Meredith Grey is like a cockroach of TV that won't die and I say that in the nicest way possible I think that there's tons of part of her character that I really like there's tons of storylines that I really like of her but if you want to like talk real if you want to talk real with me this is the character that will not die on television she has been through the most things I've ever seen a person go through ever and she has survived all of them she is a cockroach and I don't understand how Shonda Rhimes can't just let her be happy for a minute just for a minute or like have her exit the show because like she needs to be happy for once there's no way that she is enduring this much stuff i could kick it with meredith for a long time like if i could like categorize it in a way of like seasons like i love her during the first season and then like the back and forth with like derek just pisses me off for some reason and then i'm on her side again because i hate derek and then when they get together i like them for a little bit and then when they're kind of like in the middle, like I would say like after the plane crash, like I don't really like Meredith. Like I don't really like her when she doesn't have Christina by her side. And then Christina comes back and then they have a fight. And then I don't like Meredith again. And I'm annoyed by her. And I just keep going back and forth with her. Like I can't ever just like fully, I can't fully say that I like this character because I feel like she just continuously goes back and forth. And I do like her character a lot more once Derek has passed. I think she becomes like a much better character after after Derek passes mind you I've only watched a few seasons of her after Derek passed I didn't watch all the way up to season 20 I probably watched about four or five seasons after Derek passed but she definitely is a better character after Derek dies Derek was a crutch and we'll get to Derek in a second but like I think that she is so frustrating to like it is really hard to like Meredith Grey as an entire being because there is just so much stuff that she does that is so like unnecessary and i'll get into that like when i get into plots but like for the most part the majority of time that i hated her is because she's attached to derek it's not really because of her it's because of her association with derek because he is just so annoying as much as i say that she's kind of annoying like the fact that she like survived that much kind of eats and like i kind of like it that she just like keeps coming back after all this time like she has so much sentimental attachment to this hospital that she just keeps coming back because if it was with me i would have left that place a long time ago like when christina was like i can't be around seattle grace anymore because it is just attached to all this death like it literally is a cursed hospital that would have been me but not her she was like i'm gonna stick around she's the definition of staying in your comfort zone because like i'm not moving anywhere i'm staying in this damn house and i'm staying in this damn hospital and i'm raising my kids here i'm not moving nowhere i have to give credit where credit is due she has a lot of storylines that i really do like some of her storylines are like literally my favorites across the entire series my biggest complaint is when she's like pining over Derek. i don't like it when she pines over him i like it when he pines over her there's nothing more than i love than an obsessed man but i don't like seeing her because she's such a strong character i don't like her seeing pining after Derek shepherd or all people because it's just so annoying i just think overall like Derek brought her down like after a while he just brought her down like he he did not let her bejeweled he did not let her bejeweled she needed someone to let her bejeweled best fucking character of the show boom we're talking about Christina Yang I love Christina Yang I love her more as a representation of what she represents for like womankind rather than her character specifically i think that like her as a character specifically isn't like the most amazing thing but i think like what she represents is like so cool as i already talked about earlier that her character's existence has like so done so much for women and like society like the representation of a woman who like flat out did not want kids and who was like so dedicated to her work to like know that like to be so sure of yourself that no kid would ever have a full life in your care is something that i think is really important and is not talked about enough because so many people have kids out of an obligation that they think that's what they're supposed to do out of guilt around people surrounding them or even just a guilt within themselves or an unwillingness to choose 
between a career and a kid. They want to have it all. And then they end up raising someone and realizing that they like their career more. They wanted to focus there on their career more. And they resent that child for taking that career away from them. I think that her knowledge of herself is really such a strong character trait and it's why I love Christina so much I also love like I said earlier how she's just like kind of mean I think that's great Christina's storylines following her are really amazing I think her battle with PTSD and the things that she goes through really shows a full character arc of someone rather than just patching things up and making it easy they really like draw out her storyline and the stuff that she's suffering with and how she just really just wanted to quit she had no drive to be in the hospital after the shooting happened her PTSD struggles when the plane crash happened like these are severe things and a lot of times you see characters like Meredith where she just kind of keeps like going through like she kind of keeps pushing through um, and that's what she like puts on the outside but obviously she's struggling a lot more on the inside but Christina Yang really shows the dramatic effects that has on a person and I think that her storylines around PTSD are some of the best shown in television in my opinion I think that uh, Sandra Oh does an amazing job playing this character I was really sad to see Christina Lee because she's one of my favorite characters but I think the way Shauna Rhimes chose to exit her character was like a really good way as we've seen in interviews Shauna Rhimes has talked about how like there's no other ending for Christina other than giving her everything that she wants like for Christina Yang her exiting like makes sense that she would take the opportunity to you know make hearts and print hearts in Switzerland for other characters it doesn't make sense for them to leave because that's just not the type of character that we've she's written them to be but Christina Yang is the type of character that we've written to leave the show she's the perfect example of leaving that hospital and choosing what's right for her and I think that's uh, a really cool representation I think it's done really well I think that her character has such a uh, complexity to her that is so uh intriguing to me because when you watch the first episodes you're like I kind of hate her like she's kind of really mean and she's like not that nice and she's you know kind of a bitch to the patients and then over time you see how well she is and how talented she is and how strong she is really she was blind casted I think all of Grey's Anatomy was blind casted and I think she's like is an amazing like choice for the role i think she just like truly embodies such a good similarity to the main character of meredith while also being like a complete opposite i think that's like so hard to do and i think they write it so well i think they have such different personalities but they also are very similar in other ways like they always get referred to as like the twisted sisters or they're like dark and twisties moments but at the end of the day they're like quite different people and i think we finally see that in like season 10 when like they have their like big debacle and argument over things like they are really different and that's why like you know they weren't gonna be together forever like they weren't each other's persons i'm sorry at the end of the day, they just had such different goals in life and they couldn't like stick by each other's side all that time. But I love Christina. I love Christina. Now I have to lean back for this because we're talking about Izzy. Um, okay. Izzy Stevens had potential to be a great character. She had potential to be a great character. She's set up to be a great character and then they squash her character right after she has her cancer plot and they really should have just killed her at this moment. I'm sorry. If they were gonna write her off this way, they should have just killed her. There was no point in keeping her alive if they were going to write her off like that. This character, I really like Izzy at some points. I think she's like a, such a great, like kind, compassionate, empathetic character that we see especially with the patients I think she showcases a lot of empathy within a surgeon which they don't really showcase a lot a lot of the times they try to show like the nitty-gritty side of surgery and like we just want to cut and Izzy throughout the show really does showcase the empathy that she has like throughout her entire overarching character arc then she gets cancer um and I don't think that she's a bad character because she got cancer why would I think that she's a bad character after she survives cancer so she survives cancer it's this you know you know one in million one in a million shot at surviving of course she survives and then leaves because she thinks alex is the reason that she got fired when really the th reason she got fired is because she made a huge mistake and like overdosed someone 
and literally suck the potassium out of someone's body. That was su also supposed to get a transplant, by the way. She's just, she should be literally banned from any transplant list because she has lost so many people their opportunity to get their transplant. It's crazy. And then she exits and then she comes back and she's like, wait guys, like I really wanna be here again. Like, let me stay. And then they're like, no, like Alex is like, no, like, I don't deserve that, which he doesn't. Like, Alex is a dick at a lot, a lot of points, but he didn't deserve that. Like, she literally left without speaking to him. One day, he was there, and then the next day, she was gone. And she didn't tell anyone how she was doing or if she was keeping up with her treatments. They all thought she was fucking dead in a ditch somewhere. After all that time, some fuck-ass writer decides to write that Alex would leave because Izzy took the sperm fermented eggs... I meant fertilized the eggs that they froze when she had cancer just in case they wanted to have kids. She took them and had babies with them. Izzy was such a good character until she wasn't. She was such a good character. I thought she was so like great until she wasn't. Like they really ruined her character. If you're not gonna write them properly after, then just kill them. We talk about George. Do I really care about George? No. Do I really love George? No. Like, I think Alex got it right from the very beginning. I think that George is like a whiny little pathetic man. And I did not like his character at all. I thought his like obsession with Meredith was so weird. I thought that his whole storyline with Callie was also weird. He was unloyal to Callie, two-timing ho. And then the whole storyline with Meredith where he like wants to have sex with her. And then she he like has, he has sex with her when she's like, upset and then she like starts crying i think during sex and then he's like do you not like me it's like of course she didn't like you she was upset and you decided to have sex with her while she was in a very uh distressed uh, uh state of being and then you're mad when she's not like oh my god like this is so good you're weird he is the guy that like could not take no for an answer when he dies it's really not a big deal to me because like overall like his character it was supposed to be this nice, sweet guy. It was just fucking annoying. I can understand why the actor didn't like where his storyline was going because he was just becoming more annoying by the day. Stand up for the George haters because for some reason he's like such a beloved character and people like really were sad when he died. And I will say when I first watched the show, like it is a sad scene. Like there's no way you can watch that and not think it's sad. But now when I go back, like if he stuck around later on through the seasons, would he really have made a difference? No, he wouldn't have because he was unimportant and he probably would have failed the board exams too we talked a little bit about alex already talking about how his character was ruined by izzy's intervening freaking plot line he sucks at the beginning like he's really awful i think setting him up for peds is like a really interesting arc and i think it was really cool to see i think that it was so unexpected of alex that it just came at such a comforting reward at the end of the day when you saw him like truly develop a love for peds his storyline was I izzy was like a also a nice way of seeing him kind of like soften up but I think like when he was with Joe, I thought he was his best when he was with Joe. I thought him and Joe were so good together. And I was so unbelievably pissed off when he decides to leave for Izzy. Why would you leave Joe for Izzy? Like there's no world in which Izzy does all that stuff to Alex and then he leaves Joe for Izzy. Stop trying to think of creative ways to have these characters exit if you don't want to kill them. Just kill them. Because honestly, you guys don't know how to write exits. You only know how to write like run-on sentences instead of actually writing someone's exit. You don't know how to write a period. You only know how to write run-on sentences. So just kill them. The fucking devil. Okay, he's not the worst because you guys already know my opinions on who the worst <laughs> male attending is. Derek is honestly so delicious and scrum deliumptious in the first season. Like he's so like everything. And then like obviously the twist is that he actually has a wife and that he was like, you know, his wife comes and it's like, I'm Derek Shepard's wife. And it's like, oh my God, this good guy that we were falling in love with throughout the entire season now has a wife and he lied about it the entire time. That's crazy. That really doesn't bother me. Honestly, the fact that he like lies about that, I'm like, I, I don't know. Like it really doesn't like phase me. The stuff that he does later on in later seasons is what pisses me off. When he, you don't get to call me a whore. When he calls her a whore and is like, oh my God, you've been sleeping around a lot. And she's like, you don't get to call me a whore. So all the boys and all the partying and all the daddy issues didn't matter. When he calls her a whore, I thought that was like so out of line. Like he literally was the whore. Like granted, Addison did cheat on him, but then he went 
and moved to another city and slept with a girl the the first week of his job mind you he was an attending and then he decides to call her a whore is like it's ridiculous it's honestly like it's not fair it's hypocritical and he was so mean there was some when Derek is mean like he was really mean like he wasn't like expressing how he felt like he was shooting to kill and then one of the biggest fights that they have when they have the fight about Zola and and then the biggest fight they have when they have the trial the Alzheimer's trial and they you know they almost lose Zola and the whole thing he was so unrelentlessly mean to her for a reason like I can understand why he would be upset but even after he found out the reason why she did it like that didn't seem to change anything for him like I don't know it really didn't make sense to me because it's like I don't know why he was mad that she was acting like how she acted through the whole course of her life ever since he met her she had been doing this type of shit she was always crossing lines to save a life like there was no there's no line like dark enough or big enough that will stop Meredith Grey from stopping her if she thinks that she can save their life and don't even get her started on Alzheimer's you know that she all about Alzheimer's you know she has this personal connection to Alzheimer's you know she has this personal connection to Weber's case honestly she didn't even had her on it I, I would have been like get her away. if you were like you knew the type of person that she was and she acted in the same way that we all expected her to do. But I'd be lying. I know I'm a hater now, but you know, I do love a good Meredith Derek edit. I love seeing their relationship play out. I think their first seasons are so cute. I think that like, they really are like a pinnacle of like, you know, drama couples. Like they just have that it factor that were they so annoying at the end? Yeah, Shauna Rams was right. There was no other way for this character to go other than die. You couldn't write him out because that's not the character that you wrote Derek to be. He was the type of person that would stay with Meredith till the end. But they try to make him unlikable before he dies so that when he dies, it's not that big of a deal. Do I think he makes a good character without Meredith? No. He has the opposite effect where Meredith makes him better, whereas he makes Meredith worse. That's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. Now, if you want to talk about attendings, we can talk about attendings mark sloan love mark sloan love mark sloan love mark sloan thought he was brought such a fun boost of energy to the show i think like the show can get really dark and gloomy sometimes and i think that mark was the perfect like attending figure to bring some sort of lightness to the show to bring some character back into it when you're dealing with such serious and sad plot lines honestly this character really brightens it up and i think his pairing with lexi brightens up the show a lot i kind of get upset when he has his whole stuff with like being a dad and whatever i think he's like i liked it that his character turned into a dad but i think he just like every single opportunity that he could have when he wanted to like take sloan's baby <laughs> Like, that was crazy. When he wanted to take his daughter's baby and be like, that's my fucking kid. And then Derek was like, Sloan's your kid. Like, he has a kid and he just doesn't want her. He wants the baby. He wants a baby to take care of. He doesn't want a fully developed human being already. He wants to mold the being. I have more to say about his relationship with Lexi, but not him specifically. Him specifically is fine. Him with Lexi is epic. Yeah. This is enemy number one. This is the biggest enemy of them all. He is the worst. He is horrible. He makes my blood boil. He is just the definition of horrid. Why is he like that? They brought him in to annoy me specifically. There is no other character that is written that is more annoying than this character than like, he's up there with like Ezra Fitz. He's up there with like friggin' Mr. Shoe there's something evil in this person what's wrong with him can he just like take a fucking hint the fact that he was so like buddy buddy with george like made completely sense because they were both fucking annoying and couldn't take no for an answer from like girls that they were with they like literally just wanted to like make girls do what they wanted them to do and be the person that they want them to be and they didn't want them like to let women be their own being i don't know I don't know. That's what I would assume. I think that this character is horrible. I think that Owen Hunt is like so nasty. <laughs> um, I think that like 
what he does to Teddy is pretty fucked up. Like, and that's on like the bottom tier list of things that he does. I, like when he comes back to the war and just like doesn't tell anyone that he's back is like kind of crazy. Like how he leave he leaves his like ex girlfriend and doesn't tell her where she is, or and doesn't tell his best friend that he's come back. Just doesn't tell anyone where he is really um that's like and that's on the bottom tier that's like literally like his like least that's his least offensive thing that he's done the, his relationship with christina is so goddamn awful i don't know who in their right mind thought that setting these two people up was appropriate i don't understand how this man got the heart of christina yang he is just gross i don't know the whole plot line of him not accepting that christina just did not want a baby just boils my blood it literally makes me so upset and like i love it when meredith gray finally like sticks it to him and is like having a baby will it won't just be like a compromise for her like it will kill her it's not a compromise you can't compromise on a baby you can't have half a baby if she has a baby that she does not like and does not want she it will kill her and i think meredith gray being the person to tell him that was like so valid like her being like i was raised by a christina it will destroy the kid as well if you make her have a baby and like when she said like stop like you're getting mad at her for being the person that you married like meredith gray doesn't eat all the time but like she ate with that like she actually ate him up because like how are you gonna be mad that someone that you married is exactly who they said they were from the very beginning. And once she said once that she didn't want a baby, she never, she never changed her mind. She never went back. She never was iffy. She never said maybe. He saw her like be kind to a child and be like, I guess you want a baby. He saw her be nice and was like, you want children. You just don't know it yet. And she's like, I'm not going to be fucking mean to a baby. I just don't want them. I don't want to take care of them. I don't want my own baby. It's going to be awful. It's going to be the most miserable thing ever. And I'm going to resent them because I'm not going to be able to go forward with my career like I want to. Because I'm going to care about a baby. Like if I have a baby, I'm going to care about them and love them. But if I have a baby and I don't follow forward with my career, I'm going to resent them for that. He's so fucking annoying. The fact that he was this old and couldn't understand that is crazy. The fact that he was that old and couldn't understand that, like, she just didn't want a baby, and that was end of, that was period end of sentence. And then when he was like, you killed our baby. I wanted to, I would have literally, uh, the whole party should have jumped him at that point. Because, like, how could you say that? How could you say that? And not only that, say it in a room full of all of their colleagues and friends. That's nasty. That's not just mean. That's nasty. I've been a nasty girl. No, you've been a nasty boy. You've been nasty to her. That was literally some of the most diabolical things ever. And if you like this character, you need to think about like your choices. If you like Owen Hunt, you need to think about your life choices and think about what has led you to this moment because he is not a like worthy character. He's awful. And I think he's still on the show. That's that's fucking nasty. Burke is fine. I don't know. He seemed like the perfect match for Christina. Like, their, like, drive for their career. But honestly, he was just, like, too hoity-toity and too much of a mama's boy to really, like, be the right one for Christina. I don't know. Because I like them together. I don't know. Him leaving at the wedding, like, doesn't really make sense with his character. I don't know. To me, it doesn't. Like, when I'm watching it, like, back, I'm like, this doesn't really make any sense. Like, why would he just leave? Like, he seems like the type of person that would know before he, like, starts planning the wedding if he actually wants to marry this girl. He didn't want to marry her because she was, like, compromising on a wedding for him. I don't know. He's fine. Um, Honestly, not very important to me. The actor that left the show left the show. I'm assuming because of what he said about his co-star, T.R. Knight, um, calling him the F-slur. I think that's a very valid reason for kicking someone off the show because that is horrible um i don't have much to say about this character he did his business and the three seasons out is there and then he left and then we all moved on let's talk about number one girl lexi gray let's talk about the princess bookie pie of the Grey's anatomy universe lexi gray this is a character that i can stand by till the end of time there's no one that could waver my mind on lexi gray she is the it girl she was perfect she was smart she was intelligent and i loved her i loved her storylines i also loved how she was kind of 
in a similar way, very similar to Christina in her willing, her unwillingness to change for a man. How he, Mark wanted to settle down so bad. And she was like, I love you, but like, I want to live out my life. And this is just the reality of an age gap relationship is that like, I don't want to settle down right now. I don't want to have babies right now. I want to have fun and be irresponsible with these, you like these young years of my life. But by the way, they're also like 30 at this point. Like, when they're in residency, like, they're like, they're, they're almost 30 at that point. So, like, the youth of my life. Okay. But she's amazing. And I love Lexi and Mark together. I think that their storyline is just so tragic. Basically, the actress that plays Lexi wanted to leave. Um, and Mark, the actor that plays Mark, didn't want to leave. But they, Shonda Rhimes was like, there's no other way for these characters to go. Like, they have to die. Like, these characters are meant to be together. They cannot not be together they cannot not end up together so they both have to die which is a crazy thing to do first of all riding the plane crash in the first place is a crazy thing to do second of all carrying off ki killing off two main characters within that also crazy Cr like cuckoo crazy they kind of take the like exit of izzy and replace it with lexi like the exit of izzy's brightness and empathy they kind of take that out and, they, and then lexi kind of steps into that place to be of the new bright source of empathy for the like main character ensemble and she just does such a good job i just loved lexi i always loved all of her storylines i think that like she was a little annoying at the beginning, but she had to be. She was, she was trying to be a little sister. And I think that Meredith was mean to her for a really long time. But I think that, like, she stuck through it. And, like, that's why she's my girl. Because who could put up with that? I don't want to be able to put up with that. I love her. Richard Weber. I honestly think that Richard Weber is also a cockroach of television. I think that he has also survived a lot that he has not died. He has survived, like a shooting as well he was literally in the room with the gunmen he survived that he survived being electrocuted and i think he goes through some i think he goes through something later on in the i think it was he gets cobalt poisoning or something where he starts like you know not being in his right mind his most important storyline to me is with adele i think his storyline with adele is just it's so heartbreaking it's so sad it literally makes me cry up i she stayed with him after the affair and then when they finally started rekindling after all that time when he started taking time to be with her she starts developing alzheimer's and it breaks my heart and i think his worst moments are when he finally starts um dating Catherine. i think Catherine and weber are just mm -mm. i don't like Catherine at all i think she was really mean for a lot of different reasons and had a very big ego especially when it comes to jackson and april that was awful but also when it comes to weber i think that she had like a very weird like territorial thing around him and it was just it was off-putting and i didn't like it but she they needed like some, some sort of like and they needed some like sort of like combating energy they didn't they couldn't just have weber just be with another person that like loved him bailey miranda bailey i like miranda bailey until she becomes chief i think that's like a very common thought amongst a lot of different people i think that she becomes chief and then like she's there for a little bit and you kind of just like she kind of just starts dwindling down as a character and starts doing things that like her character in the past wouldn't have done and i think that's really sad i think her most pivotal like plotline for me was probably when she left her first husband after he's like basically making her choose over surgery i think that like that storyline is so good and i love when she finally meets ben and finally has someone that like cares about her and like is understanding of her and then it almost is like her to an extreme where he's like i'm gonna become i'm gonna go back to medical school and then i'm gonna become a firefighter i'm crazy i don't know anytime someone becomes chief they just become like horrible all of the chief duties just make someone so unlikable owen when he was chief horrible i mean he wasn't bad he wasn't any he was just as bad when he wasn't chief he just is a bad character Derek when he was chief awful weber when he was chief i actually liked weber as chief I didn't like Alex's chief. I just think the chief role is cursed and I think that they don't know how to write someone that has power like that. I don't think they do. I think they, I don't think they do because every single time they do that, they become like this evil person. But I like Bailey up until that point. I really do. I think Bailey has such a good character until she becomes chief. Well, she ha becomes chief and then a little bit after that, she becomes like not the best character. But I loved her for a very long time. And I think that if you watch the first 10 seasons, like she is such a tried and true character that like always is like, like, I don't know, like a perfect character. 
And most of these characters that I talk about really dwindle down after that like 10th season. I think her plotline with OCD and like what she struggles with after the incident with the glove, I think is like so great. I think that like that storyline is so pivotal to Bailey and I think that's so wonderful. And I think her becoming chief makes sense. I don't think that her becoming chief doesn't make sense because she like she worked hard for that role and she was following in the footsteps of Weber. But I think the way they wrote it like dwindled down her character and like kind of went on a downfall. Like, I don't know. Just not the best. Miss Arizona no robins like queen queen it's like she's queen and then it's like queen because she goes so long with being like a really good character other than her slip up with africa actually i don't know i always go back and forth on africa and like the whole debacle of like arizona telling callie that she can't come because she's like ruining the trip for her like i kind of like agree with that like don't come on my like trip where i'm like starting a new life and doing something that's like really beneficial and something that i've always wanted to do and complain the whole time like if you want to come then come but if you don't want to come then don't come like right i always go back and forth because then i could also be like oh like kai was already there like she was like you know she was already in the airport and then she just was like no i don't know both i don't know i think i agree more with arizona because if i was going on a work trip and like I was moving somewhere for work for something that I was really passionate about. And then like my spouse was just complaining the entire time. I would probably just be like, then we shouldn't be together. Like if you're not going to support me by coming on this endeavor, then you should just stay here. I think that her character is really good. I think that I like her character more when she's without Callie. I'm going to say that. I think I like her character more when she's without Callie. I think I like her character the most when she's single, if I'm being honest. I think she has, like, the biggest character developments when she is single. I think that her dive into fetal uh, surgery or something, I forget, neonatal, when she goes into that, I think that she, like really perseveres as a character i think that like it makes complete sense for her to like be at the top of her game of peas and then want to uh discover a new specialty i think that like makes complete sense with her i also just think she's like a queen for being like the longest running lesbian on tv i think that's like kind of a queen moment and the whole custody battle which we'll like get into the custody battle because that was like a really big thing the custody battle like i completely was on arizona side like i don't know how they could write Car callie's character off like that callie's character sucked ass at the end like so so bad and transitioning on from arizona let's talk about callie because callie character is another one that gets written off and is just so horrible just is not i don't know just like is so hard to watch i really liked callie for a long time i thought she served at a really good representation she was always self-identified as like badass she was the ortho surgeon she was like really cool she was a little bit edgy she came in and she like she was a top resident she knew what she was doing like it was all just sort of like leading on to a very good like point and like her and george just never made sense to me i'm sorry i don't know how they ended up thinking about that combination they were just two lonely people that ended up getting together and they had no chemistry no spark just boring just and just a weird match after seeing the types of people that callie ends up with later on it just doesn't make sense for her to be with george and i do remember remember like izzy and meredith all, all being like super mean to callie and i never really liked that i always thought it was like so rude even though like callie in her beginning seasons i will say callie in her beginning seasons wasn't the most pleasant like she did have some annoying moments but the way like callie like relentlessly like bullied her was like kind of weird and like also kind of giving like a racist like teen group vibes i don't know uh, that, that maybe that's just like me projecting but that's what it was giving to me and i didn't like it i like callie when mark's alive i like it when she's with arizona when mark's alive and then mark dies and then i'm just like i don't like her as much but then when arizona cheats on her i'm like dang like that fucking sucks like and then arizona tries to justify that by saying that like she was on the plane crash and like callie wasn't on the plane crash it was like she didn't lose anything like da -da -da -da, which was like such a weird thing to say when like mark literally died and like they've been she's been going through turmoil with arizona like arizona did lose her leg but like callie has been like non-stop helping her with it the entire time and then like to say that like that justifies cheating on your partner who's been by your side through the entire time of the loss of your leg like it's really crazy thing to say like it is like it is it's a crazy crazy thing to say after you just cheated with the girl from one tree hill that's really bizarre and i honestly would never do it just two characters again that kind of dwindled down i think callie's character got worse 
I think Arizona had a little bit more. The reason why I say that is because Arizona just kind of like, they they just write her arc a little bit better. With Callie, I think they're just kind of rushing to get her out. And anytime they rush to get a character out, they just like decide to make them a shithole like character and make them do decisions that they never would. I don't know why Callie would move to, where was it? Like New York or something for Penny. They barely had any chemistry. And I don't even have a picture of Penny because she was such a uh, like a useless character to me. She didn't make any difference. Stephanie and Joe. Joe, I really like when she's with Karev and when she's like a little bit older and when she's finally in attending and when she like kind of gets her own roots. But when she's in residency, she's so fucking annoying. Like you cannot deny that she's so fucking annoying, specifically to Stephanie. She's so mean to Stephanie. And just like relentless. Like, I don't know. I just don't like them together like never worked out for me like they just like clashed so much like they just were polar opposites they needed to not be with each other because they just did not go well together they were joe was just really mean to stephanie stephanie honestly she doesn't really stand out to me that much and why i say that is because they kind of they kind of constantly just push her to the back like with Jackson whole storyline, she gets pushed to the back. And then in light, when she's in comparison with Joe, they kind of push her to the background. And then they only really showcase her whenever they have her leave the show. Because I think even when she's like uh, studying with Amelia, when Amelia becomes her mentor and like Neuro, she falls back again. And like, it's kind of just in the shadow of Amelia during that time and just kind of a supporter. And then they really only showcase her as like a star character when she finally has her exit, which I think was a really good way to exit Stephanie's character, even though I think the way that they wrote her character really just leaves her as a background character for her when she was like part of like the B cast of the like ensemble, you know, she's not like on the level of like, you know, the attendings like Meredith and Alex and Bailey, but you know, in terms of like the residents and stuff like that, she was like a prominent character and they kind of just like leave her out a lot of the times. And then she has her exit episode where she literally like escapes this like serial rapist and kills him and like catches him on fire and then escapes the fire with the little girl. It's a, it's a badass episode. And I love that episode. I just think that like her storylines handled before that just seemed very lazy. I think they don't really give her much to work with, which I thought was sad because I did show in relation to Stephanie was always bad, but I think her storyline and her storylines of abuse and what she suffers is actually a really powerful storyline. And it was really one of the first times we saw this come to the forefront of the show and have it like really stick around with her instead of just like, you know, a lot of the times we saw patients that suffered abuse and, you know, cases that they worked on that suffered abuse. And Joe was like, really the first time where it's like a full main character suffering from abuse and seeing how that affects her everyday life and seeing those patterns still come back with I think the OBGYN guy and then with freaking Matthew Morrison coming in and being like a fucking devil and then getting hit by a drunk driver and dying I was like that was that gag gagged me and I loved her with Alex I did love her with Alex and I was I was really sad for her when he left because I feel like it just was not right for her I don't think that that was at all okay to do to her I don't think she deserved that at all they like get married like she thinks that she's finally settling down with someone and then he just leaves he just leaves what do you mean he just leaves I could go on about it forever. A flip floppy character as well. They're all flip floppy characters. Joe specifically, I think when she was in her residency and internship, she's just so fucking annoying. And then she come, becomes an attending. Ooh wee mama. Let's talk about Addison. I keep almost calling her Addison Ray, but Addison, the most misunderstood character of all time. You watch the show and like, like you think like you hate her. And then like all of a sudden you're like, wait, no. Because I would cheat on Derek Shepard with Mark Sloan too. Why wouldn't I? She's a baddie and people are jealous of her. Like people are just jealous of her. I know Ellen Pompeo was jealous of her when she got her own spinoff, even though Grey's Anatomy is literally like her fucking show. I don't know why she would be mad that she got a spinoff when Grey's Anatomy is already Ellen Pompeo's show. But oh, just a misunderstood character. I would hate Meredith too if I were her. And I kind of already don't like Meredith and I'm not even her. I stand by her. And you can't talk about one without the other. Jackson and April. Jackson and April, 
I really liked together. They were one of those characters in the couples that I just thought were perfect for each other. And I hated it that they wrote it so that they weren't. <laughs> That like really makes me sad that they wrote it so that they weren't perfect for each other. Like I wish they stayed together. I thought they were going to have a family and like, you know, stay together. And then they just do that weird like co-parenting thing and they're together, but they're not. And they like hook up and then they're back again and not again. And will they and won't they? And I have a baby and we're together. It just, it became so tiring. They had so much like potential when they first get together when they first hook up at the boards i was like this real television is back real te television and chemistry is back because they they've been needing to hook up for the longest time and the fact that they just immediately squash it she gets married to someone else and like he stops the wedding and after that they should have just been fine they should have just had a couple seasons of time together before they died because there's no other way to write them off just kill them why can't they have been happy why couldn't they have been happy i used to be an april hater that's a that's a big thing about me is that i used to be a big april hater i used to hate her i used to think that she was just so like mm. she reminded me of like she reminded me of like uh, mrs pillsbury and uh glee like i just didn't like her and then over time i saw her character grow and then i was like okay i'm being too harsh and i also just i don't know why but i always got like a very conservative vibe of her and then I, that kind of turned me off and then she was kind of under owen's wing and that kind of turned me off and then once you actually start watching her plot again and just seeing it through the eyes of her you realize that she's actually like really chill and like a little bit annoying but like I really like her and like when she has a baby like that really changes it for me. Um, Everybody knows that I love Jesse Williams and I love that Instagram live of him to the day I die. That Instagram live of him with the random man is my favorite thing in the world and that's only that's the only thing I can compare his character to and Jackson Avery will never compare it to that Instagram live character that I witnessed. It was spectacular and he's a nepo baby why would i like a nepo baby character i don't like nepo babies in real life why would i like a character based on so those are all the characters that i deem worthy of talking about there's like a lot more characters that like you know obviously grace our screens but like i don't have opinions on them if i didn't put them in then that means i don't have opinions on them and if you have opinions on them you couldn't talk about them so season one happens and season one is just so it's so good. Like season one is something that stays with me. Like it stuck with me. Like that pilot episode is so good. Like Meredith narrating through the entire thing. And then at the end, you like hear that she's like, the narration is her talking to her mom. Gagged. And her mom doesn't even know who she is. Gagged. That's so good. That's so everything. I love it. I think that like the first season, like it just has such a good foundation for like what sets up to be for the next like 20 seasons i think like the foundation of this first episode literally is just like epic i think that like you know meredith christina you know this ensemble cast just works so well together the chemistry that they build up for meredith and derek is just superb it's like everything it's like a little bit forbidden it's a little bit like, taboo it's a little bit like we have to keep it hidden it's a little bit like um a little bit older and i'm you're attending and i can't like i can't we can't do this if people find us out and like the way that like derek is like just so obsessed with meredith just like is everything to me like i don't think we should be able to watch shows where like a woman is pining after a man i just love seeing like a man pine after a woman that he knows wants her like it's different than like george pining after meredith because he knows she doesn't like him and he continues to push that but like Derek knows that meredith wants him because she's like obviously she's flirting with her eyes and just like the moments that they have in the elevator where they like have a spontaneous kiss and like they're dating and then it's all ruined it's all ruined when Addison Shepard Montgomery comes into the picture. That was the gag of the century. Because honestly, when you're watching it, there's no signs to it. There's no way we can even like guess that it's going to happen. There's nothing. It's a complete blindside for us and Meredith. We don't know have any... He is built up to be just like this cocky, cool, charming, sexy guy. He's McDreamy. He's McDreamy. And then he's McMarried. And season two immediately, like, immediately becomes way better. Like, in terms of, like, drama and things that happen, you have the episode where Meredith puts her hand in the bomb, which is one of the best episodes I've ever seen in my entire life. I've never been that on, like, 
I watch a lot of like movies and TV shows. I watch like suspense, thrillers. I watch a lot of different stuff. That episode changed my life. It made me scared of something that like I don't think I will come into counter with a lot in my life. I don't think I hope never. It made me scared that I was going to come into counter with a uh, like a detonated bomb on my hand and I was holding it in place so it wouldn't explode. It literally made me fearful of that. Like it was like how I was scared of quicksand when I thought it was going to be something that I came into counter with like all the time. It literally f- made me fear for my life. And I literally will never forget that episode where she's sitting there watching Dylan walk off with the bomb and we think everything's fine. We're like, Meredith's fine. Like they got the bomb out. And the motherfucker fucking explodes. There will be nothing that can like, there's nothing that like altered my brain more because there's just no way I could have predicted that. There's no way I could have at all anticipated that coming. And the writer, Shonda was so crazy. Like if I could say someone was so crazy for that, I would say that because like she was so crazy for that. I felt so safe. I finally felt a sense of relief until I didn't. Izzy is making a relationship with Denny Duquette, which is also a crazy storyline. The Denny Duquette storyline, by far, is one of, in my opinion, in my opinion, and this is going to get me, like, so much hate. I think it's, like, an overrated storyline. The way this works out well is when Teddy has it happen with Henry, falling in love with a patient. But with Denny Duquette, like, it really just doesn't make sense, in my opinion. I think they have good chemistry, but I think this, the way they set it up, just really doesn't, it's not believable enough for me. So when he dies, it doesn't really impact me the way that it does other people. And I just think it's a very overrated, like, storyline. I think Izzy should have been fired. I think that, like, she was an intern. There's no way she should still have her medical license after that. I think that, like, the entire thing was just so absurd that that was like even possible that that could happen I think that like the entire Denny Duquette storyline just like is something that I just like I like it more when he comes back as like a a vision to her I think he's like more of a impactful character when he comes back as like a vision now when I talk about the acting around those scenes Catherine Heigl's acting around those scenes that's not overrated I don't think that's overrated I just think that like the storyline in itself just when I watch it back after everything that happens in Grey's, I can understand like that storyline coming out week by week, how like, <gasps> how jarring that must have been. But after watching like the series and going back to that plot line, it just doesn't stick out as much as some of the other episodes that I believe to be better. So let me know what you thought about that storyline because I know a lot of people like it. So I want to know what you like about it because for me, it seems a little overrated, but I know it's everyone's favorite. I know it's so many people's favorite storyline. So please let me know what you guys think of the Danny Duquette storyline. I would love to know what you guys think of it and like why you like it. Season three is something that matters so much to me. I, one of my favorite episodes in television history is the episode where Meredith drowns. I really like this episode and that's why I really remember this season so vividly because I love that fairy boat accident episode so much. I think that was such a cool episode. You have so many different plot lines entering. Ellis finally dies. Meredith is suicidal. Alex finds Jane Doe. Izzy does an operation in like the middle of nowhere. She just burr holes in like the middle of a triage scene and Burke proposes to Christina. That, all that happens in one episode. OMG. I love this episode. And this is when you really start hating Derek because instead of like showing empathy for someone who is probably struggling with suicidal thoughts, he like almost gets mad at her for being suicidal. He very much is like, you knew how to swim. Like, why didn't you swim? Like, why don't you want to swim for me? Like, aren't I worth living for? That's how much of an ego he thinks. He thinks that he would be enough to stop someone from suicide. Him being alive and in someone's life would be enough to stop them from suicide. That's how fucking fucked up he is. And honestly, I know there's a lot more nuance to this, but this whole thing of him being like, she couldn't commit to life, she can't commit to me, was like a really weird way. And I know I'm like very much like, 
saying this in the extremes, but like that's what it is. And it's it's an extreme show. I'm gonna say them in the extreme. It was just such a weird thing to see. And like their storyline through season four was just so weird because they were fine until they weren't because Derek decided that like because she like was suicidal. He, like, couldn't be with her. But the season finale is obviously a banger. Obviously, we need to, obviously we need some weddings in here. And Burke and Christina have a wedding. And Burke walks away. Literally just, like, leaves her there while she's all, like, in a wedding dress that his mother picked out for her. And that was fucked up, Burke. That was really fucked up. And I already talked about Burke and, like, him leaving the wedding. And then, like, Meredith, like, kind of, like, breaks up with Derek at the wedding and is, like, it's so over. And so, like, they start off season four and they're, like, not really together, but they're kind of together. They're, like, flirting, but they're not. And then they, like, start seeing other people. And by start seeing other people, I mean, like, Derek starts seeing other people. And this is when season four starts. This is when you get, like, Lexi Gray introduced and Lexi's, like, I'm here to, like, you know, find my sister. And, like, you know, I know she works at this hospital and da 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 And, like, Christina recovers from Burke leaving her the altar and like george failed his exam so he has to retake his intern and through this whole season this is the back and forth of meredith and Derek. like this is the true back and forth where it's like they should just be together they obviously want to be with each other that's like the most obvious thing but like Derek wants someone to commit to him and then she doesn't want to like have a house she kind of has a similar thing to lexi gray that lexi has later on with mark where she's like you you want to you know kick out my roommates you want to like have a house already and like i'm not ready for that da, 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 da. meredith does this grand gesture for him because he needs grand gestures she like does this whole thing which like I, I also don't know how she does it she like makes a blueprint of the house like an outline of the house with candle lights which is like such a hazard in the middle of the forest and she like basically like proposes him away being like I can envision a future with us. I can be extraordinary. I think we're extraordinary. We're not ordinary. I want to be together. I envision a future. This is where our kids' room will be. This is where our room will be. We can be together. I can promise I'll commit to you. And then he's like, yes. And then you have season five. And season five is a whirlwind. What happens this season? Oh, this is a season that George dies. The whole plot centers around the exit of George's character and Izzy's character. I believe my theory is, is that they were planning on killing off Izzy until T.R. Knight, the actor that plays George, wants to leave the show. And then they were like, fuck, like, we can't kill off both of them. We should kill off T.R. Knight, but we have to keep this like cancer plot line in because it's so like slay. Uh, but we have to make her survive. And this is also the season where Mark and Lexi like start their relationship. And it's like, that's a good season for that. Like, I don't know, their chemistry is really good. George's death was just brutal for like, it was like the fact that he got hit by a bus and dr like dragged through the pavement. Like Shonda Rhimes had some beef with him or something because that's crazy. That's like not a normal way to kill off a character. But season six happens and this is the season of the merger. And this by far is one of my favorite things that's happened on Grey's. I thought it was such a good way to introduce new characters without it being too um foreign and to like just making characters exist out of nowhere i thought the merger was a really great way to introduce a whole new batch of characters mind you they killed like half of them off at the end of the season so it didn't really matter to introduce them oh this season is so good from every single episode from meredith having to donate her kidney to her father to help with lexi when she says she's doing it for lexi just like warmed her heart it was so sisterly so lovely to izzy leaving because she thinks that alex is the reason that she got fired um to the best episode i saw what i saw in this episode the investigation of the death of a burn victim who shouldn't have died teddy's introduced in this season and is a gift to christina from owen like okay owen doesn't done a lot and i don't like him but him giving to christina a cardio attending as a gift like that was at one point where i was like he really does know her and then at the end of season six, you have the most pivotal point in the series, the shooting episode, the episode following the husband of a deceased patient that died under the care of Seattle Grace Mercy West, where she died because she was on a DNR list. So after she like went a long enough time without a certain amount of brain activity, they would pull the plug on her. Then he comes back, guns a blazing because he's like the chief Weber and that little girl Lexi Gray 
are the reason why my wife's dead. And so he comes, guns are blazing, and he starts shooting up the hospital. My God, was this the scariest episode I've ever seen? I think that like this episode was done so well. And I think the aftermath of the episode is actually done really well and how each character has to cope with surviving such a thing. I think it was good. I can't talk about it for that long because it kind of makes me sad when I'm like talking about it because it, it really does instill such like a level of fear within you. And the aftermath of all the doctors, like Bailey leaving the state because she doesn't want to be near the hospital. She just takes her son and leaves. You have Derek acting out and like you know risking his life driving crazy because he like has this newfound joy for the adrenalines of life because he almost died due to being shot then you have christina who like cannot operate anymore and cannot get into the operating room after being like put into position to save Derek shepherd's life so heartbreaking um and i think it was a good way to appropriately tell that story i think that when it comes to mass shootings a lot of the times it can come off as really disrespectful and very um insensitive and i think that through this episode because you're dealing with such like mature writers and you're dealing with some like a show that already deals with such serious and drastic topics of life and death i think that it fits very well with into the storyline rather than sometimes i think people try to add shooting episodes to things that is not appropriate for at all season seven uh it encompass season seven has like all the doctors obviously recovering from the shooting and it also has a really good episode which is the mock docu episode i think that's like one of the best episodes of the, like the show i love it when they try new things sometimes and the mock docu episode where it's like they're getting like you know it's like a medical like reality tv show i thought was like really interesting and i really liked that episode i wish they did that more because i thought it was just like a fun thing i thought it was fun to switch things up and i think it was a good thing that they put that kind of closely after the season six finale to lighten up the mood to give it a little bit more of a lightness and not be so gloomy and dark i thought it was a good way to contrast that instead of just diving in straight to the ptsd that all of them were suffering um but i liked it that they did didn't avoid that completely you still have people suffering panic attacks during this you see jackson freaking out you have like some of the doctors having issues and i thought it was a great episode i loved the mock docu episode this is also the second time this is also the season where mark and lexi break up for the second time to the baby um this is also when alex brings in a bunch of kids from africa to have medical treatments done and meredith and derek fall in love with a young baby by the name of zola and they end up wanting to adopt her and this is all the season where meredith and derek are all also on a new clinical trial to cure Alzheimer's. And this is when Meredith alters the trial to give Adele the drug to help with her memory because she is suffering from Alzheimer's and she wants to give her the drug that she thinks will help them. And by altering that, she ends up ruining the clinical trial and Alex tells on her and tells Owen that Meredith switched the placebo drug with the actual drug for Adele. And this puts a lot of things in jeopardy. It puts their jobs in jeopardy. It puts Meredith's job in jeopardy. And it also puts uh, their adoption for the baby in jeopardy, which... I still have like hard time believing that like that would put it in jeopardy because if she loses her job, like she loses her job. But then like Derek still has a job and like he's a neurosurgeon like that's enough to like support a child i don't know i don't maybe i don't know about like child adoption like if messing with a medical trial would get you suspended from adopting a child obviously mark and lexi break up because mark impregnated callie while mark and lexi were broken up and then lexi's like i'm not doing this again so they break up and then this is where an infamous episode happens where Callie's pregnant. She's really, really pregnant. And Arizona and Callie go off on a trip. And as Arizona is proposing to Callie, she's like obviously not looking where she's fucking going because she's stupid. And they end up getting into a car crash. And Callie flies through the fucking window and is very, she's in, she's fucked up. She's so fucked up. And the baby's fucked up. And then they decide that like when Callie is so on the verge of dying and her baby is like also on the verge of dying, they decide that this is the perfect time to start a new style of episode. I don't know why, but they decide to make this episode of a major trauma, a musical episode and they do cover songs in this episode. They do covers of songs that you like, you know, Chasing Cars, you have, you know, Breathe, you have um, other songs. I don't know why. 
I couldn't tell you the reason why they chose to do this. If you like this episode, I'm very happy for you. This is one of the episodes that I skip, even though I do like, you know, watching like the like aftermath of what happens to Callie. Like I like like seeing her like them try to save her, but I cannot with the fucking songs. I can't with the fucking songs because it just is so unserious. Like it pisses me off to like no other extent. And I love musicals. You guys know I love musicals, but like the fact that that's when they chose to do it, it's like any other episode would have sufficed. Any other episode, literally pick any other episode of the season to do that for. Why did you choose when Callie was literally fucking dying? And then you have season eight, where this is basically Meredith dealing with the repercussions of her actions. And Derek is all mad at her. He's like, I can't believe that. And he's like, I already talked about my opinions about that earlier. So I won't get into it again. And then Christina is facing all this backlash from Owen because she knows she's pregnant. And then obviously Owen wants to keep in. Christina's like, I don't want to keep it. And that's a whole other thing. Which I already gave my opinions on Christina and Owen and like Meredith and Derek and that whole situation. So I'm not going to get too deep in it because like I kind of already did. This is also the season where Teddy asked Christina to blindly operate on Henry as she's the only one that knows how to do the surgery that Teddy wants her to perform on Henry. And Henry dies on Christina's table. I think this was one of the craziest episodes because like I don't know how they... Like, why would they do that to her? Like, how could you have her like perform an operation blind on Teddy's husband okay teddy suggesting it fine them all agreeing to it is insane is insane dude like i don't even know how everyone agreed to that like there is no world in which i would agree to that absolutely not that is just so messed up to christina i just think like everyone involved that said it was okay it's just so stupid like why would you do that the risk of that is just crazy this is also the season where owen after <laughs> being one of the people that agrees to let christina blindly operate on henry and then he dies owen also cheats on christina during this season so not only did he yell at her and berate her for choosing to abort her you know unborn like fetus then he is part of the reason why christina performs the surgery blindly on henry and then he cheats on her what do you mean and then he cheats on her how he could do all of this and this is why he's the worst character because he did all of this within one season how could one character do that many things in one season that's just awful and then he's the one that signs them to go put them on that plane If there's no Owen Hunt haters, then I'm fucking dead. The medical boards happen. We already know this is like one of my favorite episodes. And then the plane crash happens. The plane crash is something that I don't know how it entered someone's mind. That it, these doctors that have that just went through a shooting one season ago should survive a plane crash too. They should endure a, tr a, a plane crash. Where they are stuck in the woods for days. They're stuck in the woods for days with Meredith's dead sister next to them. With Arizona Robin's leg bone out. Mark fucking fighting for dear life. Derek's hand fucking hamburger meat. Christina, PTSD, Meredith, dead sister. Again, I don't, entire thing was just, it was just bizarre that someone could write that. Now the plane crash is something that I can't watch that much just because of the screaming in it. It really does like, ah, gives me the heebie-jeebies. And I don't even want to talk about Mark and Lexi dying. I don't even want to talk about when Lexi dies because it makes me cry every single time. I, the fake out death that they do with Mark is crazy. How they're like, oh, like, he died, but then he survived for a little longer than you thought. And we all got to say our goodbyes to him. But then he died anyways. You, bitch, fuck you. But it would have pained me more to see Mark live without Lexi. Like, to see him have to grieve Lexi through the course of a season would have killed me more than just having him killed. I'm sorry. Is that so wrong to say? Is that so wrong? So a lot of stuff happens in season nine. There's a new batch of interns. Christina leaves for a little bit. Bailey gets married. Adele dies. Lots of stuff happens in this season. But the most important thing that happens in this season is that 
the survivors of the plane crash, Derek, Meredith, Arizona, and Christina, decide to sue the people, obviously, that were responsible for the plane crash. And they see, they find out when they're suing that the liability actually relies on the hospital for booking through an airline, a private airline that had history of faulty equipment. So since the survivors of the plane crash decide to sue the hospital, the hospital is now going bankrupt. They have no money because they gave all their money to the survivors of the plane crash. So often does everybody make remarks at the survivors of the plane crash for like choosing to sue instead of to settle. I don't know if I fucking almost died and had to survive in the woods for days. I would want to sue someone too. I don't think there's an amount of money that I would not sue for. And then they decide because they're like, we're such good people. We're going to buy the hospital with our money, which is like not even enough to buy it. They decide to join their money, but then they're like, fuck, this is not another enough money. We need an investor. So then they go to investors and the investors like, no, like you came in with like a frigging shitty plan. Like I'm not fucking like investing in this when you have like nothing. And the only person that will invest in the hospital and actually make up for that money is none other than the Harper AV Foundation, none other than Catherine Fox. Okay. <laughs> like, okay. But the only way that she agrees to buy the hospital is if her son has a seat on the board. Season 10 has a lot of different things that happen, but some of the highlights is that Callie faces a medical malpractice lawsuit, which is actually one of my favorite episodes. I think that her and Core and like while she's dealing with like a thing, the divorce with Arizona, like they're not together, they're separated now. And then she's going through the medical malpractice lawsuit was actually a really interesting uh, episode. I really liked when they brought in like lawsuits when it came to the medical issues. I thought it was like a very interesting way to incorporate new environments and new issues that we didn't know about into the show. It, like really made it uh, much more interesting to watch. Christina had sex with her intern Ross and April leaves her wedding to be with Jackson. So this is the whole April Jackson storyline that starts, which honestly, I wish they just got together after the boards happened. I really wish that this didn't happen when like she's like getting married to someone else. And then he's like, I, I object. And then Christina and Meredith have their like big fight, which is was like a really big fight where like basically Christina is like, you're not as dedicated to the job as I am, which is true. And then Meredith is like, I'm just as good of a surgeon as you are, like just because I have kids doesn't mean that I can't be a good surgeon. And like, Christina's like, I'm not saying that you're not a good surgeon, but like, you aren't as good as me. <laughs> like, honestly, like, they were both kind of spilling because, like, I feel like the way Christina delivered a lot of her lines to Meredith was like very demeaning of, it was sometimes demeaning of, you know, the fact that she had kids. Like, you know, at some point you just wavered off and you just got left behind because, you know, like, Bailey is able to have kids and like do both at one the same time and you can't. I don't know. It just seemed very like mean. And then like also Meredith, the way that she talked to Christina was also very mean. It was basically being like, you're a fucking bitch. Like the thing is that Meredith couldn't tell Christina that she was a better surgeon than Christina. So she had to be like, you're a fucking bitch. Like you're a fucking bitch and a mean person. Like you're terrible. You also get introduced this season of like Derek having this like, you know, his technology and his brains like being used for the president. The president wants his technology that he's been thinking of and da 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 da. There's this whole thing. And then like, then this starts a whole new rift between Meredith and Derek where Meredith is like, oh, I want to start my career. And everyone's like, you know, trying to get me to stop. And because I had children, I can't do my career. And I'm just like my mom, but I don't want to be like my mom. So I want to be there for my kids. But I also want to like be the best surgeon. And like my husband's not letting me. And Christina's telling me that I can't do it. And everything sucks. And bah, bah, bah. but I get it. Like, honestly, if I were her, like, I would probably feel like spread super thin as well, especially when her husband doesn't even support her. Christina's also up for a Harper Avery Award. And it turns out no one at Grace Low Memorial will ever receive a Harper Avery Award because they have investors of you know the Harper Avery Foundation which I don't know why they didn't think about that earlier I don't know why no one warned them I don't know why Catherine didn't tell them 
like if you would have just told me I wouldn't have flown out to the award ceremony and look like a fool that was so shady to me and like I don't know a lot of the stuff that Catherine does is just so shady and mean for no reason like I don't know and at the end of season 10 the big thing is Christina leaves the hospital to take over Burke's job in Zurich she finds out that someone has invited her to Zurich to look at the technology they've been using for hearts and they've been like printing hearts and basically he wants her to take over the hospital and take over the production of, you know, this groundbreaking heart surgery stuff so that he can, you know, retire and live with his family. And Christina takes it, which makes sense. I already told you that. Okay, and this is when I have to lean back and kind of sit because the next thing that happens, the only thing that happens in season 11 is basically Derek dies. Maggie is introduced, which is obviously Meredith's like half sister, Weber's daughter, Ellis Gray's daughter. The whole season, Derek's going like back and forth in Washington, like doing all of his stuff. And then he comes back and he's like, I love you. Or like he like tells Meredith, he's like, I'm coming back or like I'm going away. And then he fucking dies. He dies because they don't do a CT on him. He dies from a brain injury, which is just like Shauna Rhimes is so nasty because it's like, of course, you're going to make the neurosurgeon die from a brain injury. That was like a simple thing that could have been avoided. Like making his death be so avoidable is so nasty, 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 nasty. Like it's honestly the most nasty thing I've ever heard of in my entire life to do that to someone, but deserved. By deserved, I mean that like Derek deserved to die. I don't think that like his character continuing on the show would have made sense i think that him his whole storyline with washington and when he decides to not take the job in washington and then he stays and makes everyone miserable and he makes everyone around him miserable because he didn't take the job in washington and he's resentful to everyone around him because he didn't take it he leaves the position open and then his sister amelia takes it and then he's like i want it back like i'm the main head of neuro and she's like no you're not actually i am like I literally took your job and then he's mad at Meredith because like Meredith isn't like doing groundbreaking things and he was like we stayed in fucking Seattle so you could just like sit around and play with your friends and not do groundbreaking things when I was going to do groundbreaking things in Washington it's like maybe like you should have stayed in Seattle because you wanted to be with your family like maybe because you want to stay with your wife and kids you should have stayed in Seattle because maybe like the only reason to life is not just like doing groundbreaking work. And the last season that I'm going to be talking about is season 12, because I feel like this is like the last time something really crazy happens. Um, basically, like Penny is introduced, which is the doctor that worked on Derek's case and like is the doctor that like Meredith saw at the hospital and was like, you're the reason why my husband died. Da, 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 da. She was like, it's fine. Just like do better next time. Like you'll always remember the first time a patient died. That was your fault. And then Penny is also introduced as Callie's new girlfriend. And that stirs a whole thing. That episode at the dinner party with Meredith and the, that whole thing was so crazy. But the main thing that I want to talk about in this season was actually Callie and Arizona's divorce and the custody, the child custody battle that they have due to Callie wanting to move to New York with Penny and take Sophia with her. This trial, I gagged. By the way, like I said earlier, love the trial, love the lawsuits, love all that. Ooh, Callie was nasty. Callie was so nasty. You cannot watch this and not think that Callie is nasty because the things that she lets them say about Arizona is so nasty. Like the fact that she would even let them would even let them hint at Arizona not being Sophia's real mother because they're not related by blood was just foul. It was so foul. Everything about that just made me resent Callie's character. I just like hated it. I hated Callie for that. I thought that it was like the worst thing her character could have done. And I don't even know. I don't know how she thought that was going to go. It's like, you're the one that wants to fucking move. And for like Penny, which like we really didn't even see their relationship together, that it was like that great. And it's like, you're the one that wants to move. And then Ka and then Arizona feels so bad that she ends up letting Sophia go with Callie anyways. You guys are stupid. Like if you guys just had a normal conversation, it would have been fine. But you guys decided to take it to court because like Arizona, if you were just going to let them go, then just let them go. Like, why are you changing your mind? If you're going to go to battle and fight for your daughter, then keep her. What the fuck are you talking about? And then like after this, like at, after this point in like the show, I lose all recollection for what happens in which order. Like after 10 seasons, I can only keep stuff in chronological order for 10 seasons. After that, I'm out. 12 was really where my like recollection disappears because I remember the 
trial and i remember the episode where meredith gets attacked by a patient i don't think as a whole season 12 is like amazing but i think it's better than season 11 i think like a lot more stuff happens in season 12 that like is much more interesting i think this like trial between them is really interesting and meredith's journey and recovering is really interesting there's so much stuff that happens within season 13 and 14 and 15 as well like 14 is the season where uh matthew morrison comes in 13 is when stephanie exits the show and 14 is when joe and alex actually get married i think 15 is when alex just goes away or maybe it's 16 or something like that i can't remember there are so much that happens in this show and i think that it really dwindles down after season 10 and like everyone says that because Derek died it dwindled down and that's like not where I agree at all like I think it definitely has everything to do with the writing why I say season 12 was really the last one that caught me interested was because that season 12 actually turns out to be the season that Shonda Rhimes left the show she, the, season 12 was the last season that she actually contributed into writing and then you can really see a big shift in where the plot lines go and like how they're just kind of choosing to do random things and bank on nostalgia for past seasons and bring up mark and lexi and have flashbacks and have like meredith walk through the halls and think about all the people that fucking died in her life it's like if this show doesn't end with her either like leaving in peace to go to a retreat where like there's no one from her former life in and she just leaves with her kids or she just like dies peacefully like i don't know what else you need from her because like she she cannot keep going on like this. She cannot. And I think season 20 was Ellen Pompeo's last season. I think that's when she finally like decided to like leave or maybe she was 21. The last 10 seasons of Grey's Anatomy are something that I haven't caught up in, in a long time and haven't even watched some of the seasons. I've only watched half of the last 10 seasons. So if you guys want me to do a full video on that, I would love to do that because I love talking about Grey's Anatomy. I think it's like really interesting. There is so much to talk about and that's why I really want you guys to join me on Fable because that's where I'm going to be getting into some of the more nitty gritty details and that's where you guys can talk to each other about different episodes that happen because obviously I can't talk about every single episode I can only talk about the episodes that were most important to me and that stood out to me that were most interesting to me um but through fable you're able to talk about which episodes are most interesting to you which I think will be a really fun way to get a community going surrounding Grey's Anatomy because there's just so much to talk about with this show the show is a lot of lore the show is continuously running I would love to continue making videos on Grey's Anatomy if you want me to I there is so much to talk about other than like just the plot lines there's so much Grey's Anatomy lore and like stuff that goes on behind the scenes that are just so that shit crazy i love Grey's anatomy i'm on my rewatch right now so we can rewatch it together i'm on season one as we speak so i'll be going through season two season three through the weeks that go on so please join me on fable because i would love to talk to you guys about Grey's anatomy so that wraps up for today guys if you want a part two of this video let me know i would love to do the last 10 seasons of Grey's anatomy for the first watch i would love to talk to you guys about the new storylines and i'll see you guys next time bye